Strategic Air Command, guardian of America's freedoms, the world's protective shield against the spread of communism, victors of the Cold War. For nearly five decades, the men and women of the world's most professional military organization stood at the point, on alert, not in search of war, but in search of peace. The original SAC Museum opened its doors in 1959 and had as its first and only exhibit the B-36 Peacemaker. The idea for a SAC Museum was suggested by the man who became known as the father of the command, General Curtis E. LeMay. Located at the end of an old runway at Offutt Air Force Base, the museum grew steadily over the years. By 1995, the museum had built its major artifact collection to 33 aircraft and six missiles, all sitting outside on the tarmac. Many parts of the collection were extremely rare, such as the B-36, with only four left in existence in the world. But by the mid-90s, after nearly four decades, the shiny airplanes and glimmering missiles were giving way to the damage done by the harsh winters and blistering summers of the heartland. The elements had taken their toll on this rare and valuable collection. Birds and varmints did an equal amount of damage. Storms and winds caused damage as well and the aircraft and missiles began to show their age. It became clear that something had to be done, or the museum would be forced to give up its collection forever. The first step was to figure out how to do it, how to take a tarmac full of aircraft and missiles and put them all under cover in a spectacular, one-of-a-kind, world-class facility and at a reasonable cost. A team of engineering and construction experts were quickly formed. The architect for the new 300,000 square foot facility was Leo Daly Company and Keywood Construction Company was named the general contractor. Over the next 20 months, scores of subcontractors and hundreds of workers would convert the dreams and drawings of this team into reality. Construction began immediately. Grading crews soon converted part of Nebraska's rolling farmland into a site that would be home to three major structures, two main exhibition hangars, one of which would also house a restoration facility and an all-glass atrium that would connect the two hangars. The exhibition hangars would be large enough to contain six football fields. In addition, a 250 car and bus parking lot would be built and a parking area for 18 wheelers would be added later. By the middle of summer in 1996, the land was graded, the pilings were in, and steel was ready to start coming out of the ground. One of the great engineering feats of the complex was the construction of the steel beams that support the bell roofs of the exhibition hangars. A total of 21 beams needed to be erected, each fitting perfectly together. Each beam is 80 feet tall and 270 feet wide at the base. More than three and one half million pounds of structural steel was used in the exhibition halls alone. The connecting atrium would require another 1,200,000 pounds of steel. The west exhibition hangar was started first, quickly followed by the east hangar. Fall soon would give way to winter, but construction continued on schedule and under budget. But building the new facility was only part of the monumental effort that was needed to bring the new SAC Museum from a dream to reality. Preparing 33 aircraft and six missiles for the 36-mile move through the rolling hills of Nebraska, and then actually moving them, was something that had never been tried before. It would represent one of the largest aircraft moves in history. Disassembling the aircraft for the move was only part of the task. All those thousands of pieces, large and small, had to fit back together at the other end. At the same time, the museum's restoration team would bring many of the aircraft up to museum standards before the move. These included the SR-71, which would be the centerpiece of the grand glass atrium entrance and several smaller aircraft that would hang from the ceiling in the new exhibition halls. Three for corrosion. Replacing worn-out panels. It's an ongoing process. 
our aircraft has sat out here for some for 40 plus years. The elements have taken this toll on the aircraft. It looks good. What we're doing is we're cutting away all the, the old uh, rotten areas in the metal. We're going to restore our aircraft to do it right. That's what makes our craft at hand so huge when we're faced with problems like this and we virtually have to rebuild all of the aircraft. We're working uh, seven days a week from about 16 in the morning to about 9, 9, 30 every night. We're going to get it done. Just want these aircraft to be in the condition that they deserve to be in, based on their history, what they, what they've been able to do for this country throughout the years. That's it in a nutshell. The tarmac at the old museum soon looked like a scaled-down version of the boneyard at Davis Monthly. Although parts ranging in size from wing panels to entire tail sections were carefully stored on site, very few were considered spare. Each part. Each section, each engine, was a part of a carefully thought through master plan. As construction continued, smaller parts were moved to the parking lot at the new location. As the summer of 1997 rapidly approached, everyone focused on the first major aircraft move. Years of dreaming and months of planning culminated in a 14-hour move of 16 major loads. With a crew of over 100, the first procession snaked its way across back Nebraska roads to the new site. The move included the SR-71, D-25, RB-45, A-26, and the B-47. The tail sections of the B-36 and B-52 were also moved. Needless to say, the largest aircraft move in history drew just a little attention. How do you move a museum? You'll see in tonight's big story. We're live from the scene and live from the news flash. Take a look at these red hogs. It is moving day out at the SAC Museum. Four planes with wingspans more than three times the size of the road hit the highway today. They made the 36-mile trek on the back roads from Bellevue to their new home near Mahoney State Park. It took about a dozen trucks and cars with 50 people inside to make history. A 71 Blackbird built to fly more than three times the speed of sound. But today, can't go any faster than eight miles per hour. One after the other, inching their way along the back roads from Bellevue to Ashland, with state troopers stopping traffic left and right. It took some work to get this massive aircraft to even hit the road. No, 10-year-old Antonio Contreras is so excited, he wants to remember this moment forever. That's why he's keeping the journal. It looks different when they took out the nose and the engines. Before his favorite plane arrives, he writes, I can't wait until it comes. What does he think now? Pretty cool. With the arrival of the SR-71 at the new site, one of the most spectacular construction events was about to begin. Connecting the two main exhibition hangars is an all-glass atrium. But before the atrium could be built, the SR-71 had to be mounted in place. With the help of three cranes, the world's fastest aircraft was placed in its final resting place on three concrete mounts. The aircraft weighs over 40,000 pounds with the engines removed. Once the aircraft was in place, it was amazing to see just how close the engineers and construction crew had come to the original concept and design. Once the SR-71 was in place, work on the atrium moved quickly. The entire superstructure for the atrium is supported by three-foot-thick steel-reinforced concrete walls that are 50 feet tall. The atrium contains 525 separate pieces of glass. Construction continued at a fast pace with as many as 185 workers on site at any one time. More than 23,000 cubic yards of concrete was poured over 500 tons of rebar. The hangar floors are 6 to 10 inches thick and the tarmac behind the facility is 12 inches thick. The second aircraft moved quickly followed in July. 16 oversized loads were moved led by the most recognized aircraft of the Strategic Air Command, the B-52. In some cases, it was a very tight fit. The September move brought the recovery team one of its greatest challenges, moving the world's largest bomber, the B-36. 
The wing alone weighs more than 60,000 pounds. The remaining aircraft and missile moves went as smoothly as the first ones. Efforts quickly shifted to reassembling the aircraft and turning the new site from a large parts storage facility into a world-class aerospace museum. The new museum will house a permanent collection of nearly 4,000 exhibit items, traveling and temporary exhibits, an aircraft restoration facility, an in-house reference library, an interactive children's gallery, as well as education facilities, a 200-seat theater, a snack bar, and an extensive museum store.